Okay, folks, we are back. Welcome to Air Job Boss TV. If you are new here and you enjoy this content, please like. Also, if you find that someone else could benefit from my content, please share the link and also subscribe for upcoming news and adventure in pilot hiring in the United States. Now, today's topic is general job search topic, and that is, how, that is rather how to select an airline to work for. Now, there are several criteria, of course, and it might be very personal to you. For example, if somebody you know and you admire very much works for a particular airline, you probably know more about that airline than any other airline, and it's natural to want to aspire to follow in that person's footsteps. So that plays a big part. Now, the reason why it's so important to select an airline to work for, I know it seems obvious because you want to work for one that's cool and meet your needs, but the reality is, is you're, need, you're going to need to articulate why you want to work for this airline during an interview. So why you want to work for this airline and the process you use to select it has to be really well defined in your mind. And you might even consider writing this stuff down, taking basically, obviously having airline profiles and investigating airlines, their history, their culture, their compensation, their stability where they're based, the aircraft they operate, type of routing, schedule structure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You should always be examining this of what, what I would call your target airlines, maybe your top 10 places to work as a career ender, you know, where you would retire from. In the United States, this would be airlines such as American, United, Delta, FedEx, UPS, JetBlue, and forgive me if I did not mention others, but these are just some of the big names in air airlines in the United States. And these would be basically your, your finishing job that you would ret retire from. So I just narrowed this down to basically five criteria that I think you should examine when you're selecting the airline you would like to work for. The number one criteria, and these aren't necessarily in order, but I'll explain each one why they're important. The number one is base of operation. Where do the pilots base at that particular airline? Every airline has different hubs or different bases. The One of the most challenging things about working and even ha as an airline pilot and as an airline employer when you're looking at your employee is commuting to the job. Generally speaking, people that commute to the job call in sick more often, make misconnections, do not show up to work, are more fatigued, do not want to stay longer, don't come in early, do not volunteer for extra credit, and do not progress through the company's hierarchy as readily as someone who lives in base. For example, American Airlines, their main base is Dallas-Fort Worth. This is where their headquarters is. This is where their training center is. Delta Airlines, Atlanta, Georgia, um, FedEx, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, United Airlines is, uh, sorry, Denver, Colorado. So those really main bases, if you would enjoy living in those cities, or which one rather would you like to live in most, would probably be one of the highest indicators of what airline you want to work for. Secondarily, they have satellite bases or other bases that are not their headquarters. For example, some airlines might be based in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, uh, Salt Lake City, New York City, Orlando, um, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, all over the country. So if there's one that is in a city in which your family would like to live, this should be primary target for you as the airline you want to work for. Now, what base is really based on not necessarily you as the pilot, but your family? Because you are going to have to go to that base, that is true, but it is your family who will live in that city, oftentimes without you when you are on your trip. So you really need to make this consultation with everybody in your family. And if you're going to start a family with children, obviously, the, the safety of the city, the accessibility to extracurricular activity, and also the education that's available in that particular location is a really important consideration. So this needs to be a consultation amongst all the adults in your 
family. Okay, base of operation. All right. Secondly, company culture. If a company is like a mean company and does not get along with their work group and is always fighting with their work group, that could be relatively negative company culture. A company that is pro-employee and, and equates their customers and their employee, meaning those two groups are most important, those are equally important groups, the customer and the employee, this may be considered a more friendly place to work or a more cooperative place to work or a more quote unquote rewarding place to work. So that company culture is, is really key to how are you going to enjoy your job day in and day out when the airline suffers ups and downs? Who are they looking out for? And are you okay with that, with their, go with their company culture? Now, keep in mind, company culture changes over time. This is inevitable with current politics and societal culture and also corporate culture in general and the institution or the industry's ebbs and flows as it becomes either easier to be profitable or harder to be profitable, easier to find employees or harder to find employees. These things always ebb and flow, so the culture does shift and change slightly. Over a lifetime, I have been working at my current airline for over 20 years, and that company culture has changed dramatically. The company culture that I hired onto is no longer in existence at the airline. It has completely changed, but yet I have changed with it. So there is that aspect. But when you're presently looking for a job, look to the company culture. Also, what's so important about understanding the company culture and agreeing with it or liking it is that you are going to have to explain this in your interview. They are going to ask you, why do you want to work here? And the main reason why is because you like the company culture. You are a good corporate fit. Yeah, that's what they're looking for. They know everyone who has a pilot's license and ATP with your qualifications can fly the airplane. They know you've overcome challenges. They know you know how to communicate well. They know you're a decision maker and a leader. If you've been a captain or a high or a rank in the military, they understand all that. But they want to know, is our company worthy of your best efforts? And why? Explain to us why. So you're going to have to explain to them their company culture. You're going to have to read it back to them. You guys are known as the Love Airline. You guys equate both your employees and your customers on the same level. You balance the, the value of both those groups, which means that it's, it's more friendly to work here and it's more rewarding to come to work because it is more family and it's heartfelt family, not like family, corporate family, but heartfelt family. Okay, you would describe this. So that's why company culture, I list number two, and it's very important in understanding it and picking a company you feel that is worthy of your best efforts. Number three, compensation. Of course, every individual that has a J-O-B job is doing it for compensation to improve their standards and quality of living for themselves and their family. Compensation obviously includes pay, what comes into your bank every couple weeks or monthly, however you get paid, but also health insurance, life insurance, travel benefits, financial institutions like home loans, car loans, dental plans, vision plans, retirement plans. All this is a conglomeration of overall gross compensation or benefits package. And it's important to know that and make when you're making your various airline profiles, comparing one against the other, you compare their compensation packages. Again, keep in mind, these things change over time. One airline that's paid the highest five years from now may be paid the lowest due to bankruptcy or insolvency or other laws and financial requirements that, re that uh, necessitate lowering of benefits to pilots. Mergers can actually do that too, so you have to watch out for that, which is another point in the list here. But number three, compensation. And you're going to explain this. Why do you want to work for us at this airline? I want one of the main reasons is because of your compensation package. I feel that this airline provides the highest standard of living for professional aviators, and that's why 
when I come here, it will justify me working very hard to ensure that I keep this job and I continue moving up the ladder here. That is a normal answer to that question. Okay, number four, career progression. This is a big thing in the United States. I'm not sure how much it plays uh, at other, other countries because in the United States, almost every airline is based on a seniority system where when you're newly hired, you're at the bottom of the list of everybody else who has been hired in front of you. And you have the last choice of everything. What aircraft you fly, what base you live in, uh, what your schedule is, what your days off are going to be, what kind of trip construction you're going to have to fly. And as you go up in progress, you progress through seniority, those choices become easier to achieve. You get a better line, which is a better schedule. You get weekends off. You get trips that pay more based on the time that you're away. So you're maximizing profit per time. You get a better aircraft, a bigger aircraft, move into the base you finally wanted to live in, etc., etc. Also, some promotions, check airman, chief pilot, safety positions, fleet manager positions can also be helped by progression because generally those positions are held by captains. And until you make captain, you really can't be a chief pilot, yeah, or director of safety or fleet director or something like this. So you need to study and ask your contacts and ask the company, if you engage with them, what is the pace of progression? How long do you think it will take for me to make captain? How long do you think it will take for me to get awarded this city to live in, base in, right? Um, and so you'll need to know that as you're gathering data from uh, on your airline profiles, what the rate of progression is. There was a time in my airline where a first uh, an individual remained a first officer for almost 20 years 10 of those years they remained on call on reserve for a decade and so that is really unheard of nowadays you get hired on you're going to be a captain at most airlines in five years with the exception of some airlines you are going to get the base you want within the first year Sometimes it took 15 years to get into the base you wanted to get in back in the day, but to times have changed. And remember, that progression can also change. So don't be too attached to the progression because at times everything can stop dead in their tracks, natural disasters, uh, force majeure, acts of war, terrorism, financial hardships, plagues, all this stuff can stop progression in its tracks. But it is something to at least uh, understand, calculate, and then enter a company where progression is faster than a company where progression is slower. Okay, the last point is stability. Uh, you know, I am 56 years old at the time of this recording, and I have been actively studying and being involved in aviation since 1988. So I have been seeing, I saw, I've seen a lot of things occur in aviation. I've seen startup companies go from zero to the moon. I've seen great companies go completely bankrupt and extinct. I've seen companies come together and cut pay. I've seen some companies go uh, offer ridiculous high amounts of pay. I've seen furloughs for decades. Um, so that stability is a little bit hard to, to judge. When I got hired by my present airline, they had never declared bankruptcy. They were the largest airline on the planet. And they declared bankruptcy during the time I was working there. And I got furloughed for over a decade. Now, the recovery has been complete. It's a fantastic place to work, and I love my job and my company. But try to understand the stability of an airline and try not to enter an airline that may be unstable. Certain companies that are struggling financially might not be a great place to land. It might be better to delay being hired by a major airline for one year then go to an airline that will fail and now you'll be completely out of a job and now looking again, okay? Likewise, a large, well-known airline that is uh, tending to fail compared to a young, 
lean, aggressive airline that is growing quickly might be a better route on that lower airline. Pro progression will be a lot quicker. The building, the mat, the, the the building of mass will will allow more and more different opportunities, areas to fly, bases to occupy, different styles of aircraft, and internal moving up in position because growing airlines have a need for middle management. Yeah. All right. So those are the five. Base of operation, company culture, compensation, career progression, and airline stability. And, and, and knowing those five things, when you're asked, why do you want to work at the airline, you're going to describe these five things. And you're going to say, well, I've made a study of your airline, and one of the things that's very important to me is base of operation, it's company culture, it's compensation, career progression, the stability, and these are the what I think about your airline. All right, that's it for Air Job Boss today. I appreciate your attendance. Stay tuned for our next video.